Welcome, it's a uh, Barnegan professor. So, um, for the biotech, here uh, you would need uh, biology for sure. Um, and this is what you will be um, learning for the first uh, lecture. So, it's basically called characteristic of living things. So, the life on the earth is over 4.5 billion years old and uh, it started around 3.8 billion years ago and uh, currently an estimated 1.9 billion animals plants and the other forms life on the earth are being found and the history of the life are uh, on Earth began initially with a single cell prokaryotic cells. If everybody is, knows what's a prokaryotic cells, uh, there are two different type of cells, prokaryotic and eukaryotic. And let's see the difference of uh, what I was, um, what it means by it. And here we go. This is prokaryotic, which is has a nuclear, circular DNA, and cell cell membrane ribosome. Eukaryotes, it has a cell, cell membrane, ribosomes, linear DNA instead of circular DNA, and it has organelles, and it has a nucleus. And there are a lot of differences between nucleotide and nucleus. We'll be um, learning as we go on. Uh, let's. Um, so. And it's like I was saying, life on the earth, it started with a single cell, which is a prokaryotic cells. And uh, 200 million years, mammals didn't evolve. And Homo sapiens only 200,000 years ago. It's around 0 0.004% of the life uh, earth history here. Level of organization. All matter is formed of an element. An atom is the smallest particles of an element retaining the properties of an element. And it's combined to form molecules. Molecules provide the building blocks for cells, smallest unit of life. So basically, what's happening here is um this is what happening so elements is what you need and from elements there are atoms and from atoms you are seeing a molecules right here and this is what you need elements atoms which is here and the molecules some forms of life consist of single cells. In multicellular form, cells combine to form tissues. And then tissues combine to form organs, which can be united as an organ system. Then multicellular organisms are composed of multi-organ systems. So what's happening here is here. Uh, Okay, so there is single cells. From single cells, uh, it become tissues, and from tissues, you have an organs. In our body, this is how it works. Stomach. Okay, before the stomach, you see the tissues, and then before the tissues is get, you would have a cells. Okay, cells, tissues, organs. Organisms of the same type that capable of interbreeding are called as uh, species. Species reproduction, that's it. A group of organisms of the same species living in a given area is a population. An interacting population make up a community. Okay, so um, you will have a species, first of all. And then from species you have a populations and then from po populations you have a community and this is how it's interbred 
A community and its non-living environment is an ecosystem. So ecosystem is an it's, it's a community and it's a non-living environment. The entire surface of the earth, including living and non-living components, is a biosphere. Biosphere is a surface of the earth, okay, and it include living and non-living components. You guys have to look at this picture very carefully, okay, guys. So, because all all I mentioned just now, it's here. Okay. So let's see. So there's a community, two or more, more populations, um, different species um, living and interacting in the same areas right here. Okay, so like I was saying, there's not not one one species or two one species or two species. There are more species living in the same area. Okay, and it's it's for example antipero hog and grass. And in this picture, uh, you would see a members of one species inhabiting the same area. Okay, and here we have a uh, an individual living thing composed of many cells. Okay, and and uh, when there's a two or more population of the different species living in the same area, it's called community. Okay, and populations this one spe same spe species. Um, which is uh, in uh, members of them and that's called uh, population and when you have a single uh, or individual living thing composed of many cells it's called uh, we will have a multicellular organism and here is a di in digestive system you would see this kind of organs it's called two or more uh, two or more organs working together in them executions of spe uh, specific bodily function is an organ systems okay and here we got the stomach okay stomach is an interior which is a structure usually composed of several tissues types that form a functional unit and make sure guys organ system has a um, two or more of the organs organ is the one of them which is individual tissues uh, this is the best example that you would ever see it epithelial tissue a group of uh, similar cells that perform specific function okay and they also do the same function um to you know even if it's stomach they must do the same function not without doing a different function and and this is the tissue um and then to get into the tissues um we will have a cell okay um which is the similar unit of life this this one need red blood cell epithelial cells nerve cell this this all three of them for sure we need it's like to uh, to human to live uh, they need water uh, for sure foods uh, you know all the etc like essential living things um, and to before the cell um, they become as a molecule okay from which is uh, they contain water glucose DNA molecule sorry guys molecule is a combination of atoms okay and and like I was saying to get into the molecule you we will have an atoms before it so atoms is kind of an element okay the smallest particle of an element that retains the properties of the element hydrogen carbon nitrogen oxygen okay and defining life okay what is life life the quality uh, that distinguish a vital and functioning uh, being from a dead body okay basically it's a dead body just the uh, dis uh, distinguish a vital and functioning being uh, yeah, yeah, to the dead body living things are more than some of their parts Life is difficult to define. The complexity and ordered interactions of parts of living things gives rise to certain emergent properties. And and uh, what are the characteristics of living things? Okay, 
Living things are both complex, organized, composed of cells. They respond to stimuli, okay, and they maintain relatively constant internal conditions through uh, homeostasis. Homeostasis is a he as a human, okay, and they acquire and use materials and energy. Uh, they grow and they reproduce themselves and uh, kind of and back to you they, they reproduce okay guys and as a whole have the capacity to evolve okay living things are composed and organized complex and organized okay here we got the examples okay eyes are uh, living things respond to uh, stimuli and this is uh, I believe it's a kind of an archaea. X living things reproduce, okay? From the X we get, uh, we can be reproduced. Got living things actual nutrients, okay? Um, okay, here you guys have to actually read our back because I'm. I'm pretty sure that I'm going too quick because I just want to cover up the basic uh, of knowledge. Living things are composed of cells, like I was saying before, you know, uh, from atoms, molecule, and then uh, cells, tissues, organs, organ system, um, multicellular system, goes on, right? The cellular theory states that the cell is a basic unit of life. A single cell has an elaborate internal structure. Okay, a cells contain genes, organelles, plasma mem membrane. Okay, so genes that provides information to direct the cells. Organelles, small specialized structure that performs specific functions. Plasma membrane. That, that that's the basically enclosed the fluid cytoplasm cytoplasm and organelles uh, from the outside world. Okay, here we have the cell wall, plasma membrane, organelles, nucleus. If you guys know, what is this cell? Is it a plant cell or animal cell? It's an animal cell. Okay, guys. Um, um sorry plant cell plant cell it's the only cell has a um, uh, cell wall uh, actually nucleus and all the stuff like that uh, home status organism must maintain relatively constant and constant internal conditions Homostasis to stay the same. Example: Many organisms regulate body temperature, water, salt concentration, pH, oxygen, and carbon dioxide. All of these are needed uh, for the human. As a human, homostasis mechanism includes sweating in a hot weather, dousing oneself with cool water. Metabolizing more food, basking in the sun, or turning up the thermostat in cold weather. An organism still grow and they change while maintaining thermostats. Living things respond to stimuli. Organisms sense and respond to the internal and external environment stimuli. And sensory organs in animals can detect and respond to external stimuli like light sounds chemical etc internal stimuli in animals are preserved um, by stretch temperature pain and chemical uh, rest, rest, rest. plants and bacteria respond to stimuli as well example plants to lights bacteria to available uh, nutrients and um, in the medium Living things acquire materials, material and energy are required to maintain organization, to grow and to reproduce. Important materials like nutrition acquired from the air, 
water, soil, or other living beings. Nutrients are continuously recycled among living and non-living things, and they are incorporated into the bodies of organisms. Organisms. Metabolism is a sum total of all the chemical reaction needed to sustain uh, an organism's life. Okay, organism obtains energy in two ways. Plants and some single-celled organism captures sunlight, sunlight in photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is a big chapter you would, uh, you're going to be studying now. Other organisms contain energy-rich molecules in the bodies of the other organisms. Every organism becomes larger over time. So, for example, plants, birds, and mammals uh, grow by producing more cells to increase their mass. Bacteria grow by enlarging their cells. Okay. Basically, you guys have to understand it. Again, plants, birds, and mammals grow by producing more cells. To increase their mass, but bacteria grow by enlarging their cells. They also divide to make more interiors, but they enlarge their cells. Okay, but in plants or animals, they increase their mass. Okay. That's how they become larger over time. Growth involves the conversion of acquired materials to molecules of the organism's body. Living beings reproduce themselves. Organisms give rise to offspring of the same same type, which is called reproduction. DNA is the genetic material passed on to the offspring creating continuous of life okay offspring may be genetically different from their parents in diversity of life okay the genetic composition of whole species changes over many generations okay and you know variable offspring allow a species to evolve to undergo evolutionary changes Mutations, which is occasional errors in DNA. Okay. Mutation is an occasional errors in DNA. If something happened, um, something wrong with the DNA, that's, that's, that's going to affect their uh, mutations. Organism different in their cell type, number of cells in each organism, energy accretion. Prokaryotic and eukaryotic cell cell types named after the presence or absence of the nucleus. The nucleus is a membrane enclosed sac containing their cells genetic material. I was telling about before prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. Two cell types seen among all living beings. Prokaryotic before nucleus in in, in Greek, they call um, before nucleus only one to ma- one to two micrometers in diameter, lacking organelles or nucleus. Bacteria, archaea, okay, those are the examples for us for the prokaryotic. Prokaryotic um, before the nucleus, nuclei, nuclei, okay. That's how it's called for the prokaryotic. For eukaryotic, it's called true nucleus in Greek. Larger than prokaryotic cells, contains a variety of organelles, including a nucleus, plants, animals, for example, like stomach. Also, it's a it's gonna be as an eukaryotic. Unicellularity versus multicellularity. Unicellular is a single-celled organism found in bacteria, archaea, 
the produced in a career multicellular many cells organisms found in a career kingdom fungi kingdom plantae kingdom animali okay these are the all the kingdom of plants and animals and fungi ways organisms acquire energy autotrophs self feeders they 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 produce themselves photosynthetic organisms that capture sunlight and store it in their sugar and fats include plants some bacteria and some proteins okay all you guys know photosynthesis means photosynthesis is uh, basically um, what is happening um, in the to the plants plants get energy from the sunlight which is through the leaves and that's what we call as a photosynthesis okay um heterotrophs okay autotrophs autotrophs heterotrophs heterotrophs these are other feeders organisms that acquire energy through the ingesting molecules in the bodies of the other organisms it includes many organs bacteria proteins fungi and animals the size of a food eaten varies from an individual food molecule to injection and digestion of whole chunks okay here systematic systematic is a branch of biology concerned with the uh, uh, reconstructing uh, phylogeny evolutionary history okay naming organisms and placing them into um, hierarchical categories based upon their evolutionary relationships major categories of classifications okay these are the uh, one you might have to remember for the test the eight major categories of classification in order to decreasing inclusiveness are domain kingdom phylum class order family genus species okay. for the human domain is in equilibria okay and we have law all of the one here so you have all of these um study as well as will be on the quiz and test yeah okay um for example okay guys let's see if I can and it can be provided okay no problem but yeah make sure guys you guys study all of this because we don't have time for that um okay, let's move on the origin of classifications carlos linnaeus um he's been 1707 to 1778 laid the groundwork for the modern classification systems placed organisms under hierarchical you guys know how you call this let's see if he has good at this hold on guys this it's called hierarchical categories based on their resemblance to other organisms placed organism okay introduced the scientific name composed of genus and species scientific names each two part scientific name is a unique and recognized worldwide the scientific name in latin of an organism is formed from the genus and species scientific names are always underlined or italicized okay always guys the first letter of the genus name is always capitalized okay when you guys write down the um, genus of the um, any, anything um, you might you have to have the uh, first letter as a habitat 
the first letter of the species name is always lowercase here we have lower, the lowercase for the species okay. species name is always paired with the genus name okay species name it, it's uh, what is this for it's Korea and coli okay. or this is how you're gonna be seeing the differences right when you guys write down the essay I need I want you guys to do the um, review and uh, write down the all the all the research you have to have it uh, written down like this the species name is always paired with the genus name okay and this is two three of them you may have to have with an underlined or without underlined or in a short form when where if you need to um, if you don't have a space to write down you go with the third one I prefer to go with the third one okay. the origin of classification Aristotle 3A4A432BZ was among first to develop a standardized language for naming organisms classified about 500 organisms into 11 hierarchical categories based on the various characteristics Charles Darwin 1809 to 1882 published on the origin of species which demonstrate that all life is related by common ancestry the evolutionary relationship biologists uh, realized that the taxonomic categories should reflect evolutionary relatedness the more categories two organisms share the closer the evolutionary relationship um, all organisms share certain similarities. Similarities result from a common ancestry. Okay, the two kingdom system here. Two kingdom systems are animal life, plant A. Before 1969, all forms of life were classified into two of them. For the plant A, they include plants, bacteria, fungi, and photosynthetic eukaryotes. And the five kingdom system, okay. Monria, plantae, fungi, animal life, protozoi. Uh, they propose uh, all of these are proposed by Robert H. Wicker, 1969. Okay. And for the protozoi, eukaryotes that are not plants, fungi, animals. Okay. They are not plants, right? Fungi, animals. Are they plants? No. Okay. The three domain system introduced by Carl Woos. 1990 discovered that Kingdom Montreal included two very distinct groups bacteria and archaea based on nucleotide sequence nucleotide is a prokaryotic remember guys always sequence of ribos uh, ribo, ribosomal RNA okay domain include bacteria prokaryotic archaea prokaryotic eukarya eukaryotic okay Bacteria and archaea are proteic, which is before the nucleus, before it even gets me uh, get nucleus. Here we have a bacteria, archaea, eukaryotic, eukaryotic as uh, animals, fungi, plants, protist. You guys have to remember this, guys. Uh, I cannot go very deep onto this. Kingdom level classification, because you've been, I, I remember, um, you would get to study this in high school too. Kingdom level of classification. Systematics have to get to reach a consensus about the precise definitions of new prokaryotic and eukaryotic kingdom. And um, uh, the figure I'm going to be showing is the evolutionary relationship among the some members of the dumb, uh, domain eukaryotes. Okay, here. Plant A, fungi, and malaria. Uh, for example, if you look, out for here animal eye okay. all of these animals right and all of these are the one what's happening here it's called prokaryotes sponges kingdoms 
species all there. How many species exist? Biodiversity is a total number of species in ecosystem. Ecosystem is a non-living thing, so remember. Number of named species is currently about 1.5 million years to large organism in temperature regions. 5% prokaryotes and protists, 22% of plants and fungi, 73% of animals. How many species exit? Exhumate that 7 million to 10 million species may exit and 7,000 to 10,000 new species are identified annually, which is yearly, mostly in the tropics, tropics and forest countries. Tropical trained forests are believed to be home to two-thirds of the world exiting species, most of which have yet to be named. Okay, so all of these are the one uh, you would study um, for the first lecture and I remember it's it's a long journey and we are just in a chair study for it guys believe me all of all of the things I'm teaching you right now it's what you're gonna be uh, it's worse than learning I, in the college actually um, so better subscribe to my channel and um, you know let's get it on to bonding professor always every time type in the topic you want come in uh, comment if there is any question I'm pre you know I'm a student like you okay but I have more uh, stuff going on okay remember guys feel free to contact me tag in anything thanks guys so much i'll see you probably in a chemistry class uh thanks